Hello everyone! Today I want to show you a new program that I've tried recently. It's called Pixaki. It's quite good. It's specifically made for iPad for pixel art. And I'm going to compare it to Procreate, which is what I was using before. And we're going to have a look at all the features that it has specifically for pixel art. And yeah, I think it's going to be a lot of fun. Okay, let's start. Okay, so the first thing you are going to find your little interface here to create new one as you can see you can import photos open one of your files create folders organize your files so there's a lot of interesting stuff in the corner you know the very basic thing to do but we're gonna create a new file we're just gonna tap the plus and then it already comes with different sprites and different sizes that are very common for pixel art right your little small sprite medium sprite large sprite you can have all course the custom one and then you can choose if you want to start with a white canvas a transparent canvas or a black canvas you can change that later it's no problem it's just basically the color of your background or no background so let's start with for example a large sprite size with a white background let's create it and this is what we have okay so we can like move it around we can you know twist it around however we want just like we can procreate and it centers it like that something that's quite interesting is that in the top right corner we have the layers that you can see here we can also open the frames for animation down there we're going to have a look at that lisa and also this little magnifying button is to see the real size of what we're doing so for example if i'm drawing like something that big when i click the button is going to show me how it looks at its actual resolution right like that, that's how big 64 by 64 is so it's quite quite interesting so we have our layers uh it doesn't have layer modes like you know multiply screen etc like procreate does it doesn't really matter because you can always take it to procreate to do that i kind of miss it i think if they if they added that it would be amazing but you know i'm not complaining it has a lot of all the features that are absolutely fantastic so like with anything else you can like you know see or unsee that layer you click on the layer you can choose the opacity you can rename it you know copy or paste the layer you can convert it to static image which is for animation which basically means that that layer will always be there you it won't animate or does you know it, it always be present like for example a background or a foreground or an element that you don't want to animate so that's great for that all right let's have a closer look as well at the animation part so if we open the animation you can see down here we have you know our little frame thing down and then on the right down we have different options so if i draw something like that for example we can select different keyframes we can uh that's to activate the onion skin so we can see behind what's going on when we're animating this one next to it will basically duplicate the layer that we just use let's see it see now uh, down here i have two frames that are exactly the same and the little plus will just add a blank layer and here you can see if i activate the onion skin and can see what was happening in the previous frame and kind of you know draw over it whatever and then with play you can see it move if you want to adjust uh the frames per second you're gonna have to go in here and there you can see animation speed but we're gonna have a look at that in a little bit Let's close the animation part. We're not going to need it for now. Let's take all the frames away and we can close it. You can also close the layers if you're not working with any in that moment. I find this very helpful because it's right on the right hand side and sometimes I press it with my hand by mistake. So hiding them is quite, quite useful. We also have uh, down here, we can have a, a palette. You can make it as big or as small as you want if you have many, many colors. Uh, here you can save whatever palette you made. You can load palettes. It, it comes with a few pre-made palettes that are quite useful, but you can also save your own and name them and save them here and even, even import them, which is quite cool. You can just import palettes from, from somewhere else. And you can clear it, you know, if you want to restart, etc, etc. And to add a color, all you would have to do is like with the color picker selected, like the color you want, you just press plus and as you can see it adds it. But you can delete it later if you don't want to. It's pretty easy, pretty straightforward. It's cool that it's there. I like that. Now we're going to have a look at the top left corner. So we're going to first have a look at our brush, like the basic tool that we use uh, 
for the first one basically we're gonna have a look here so we can go from one pixel to 20 pixels 20 pixels is quite big for pixel art right like look at that oh wait invisible layer <laughs> there we go that's pretty huge right so most of the time you'll only use that if you want to color like a big area and it has which is amazing pixel perfect what does pixel perfect mean i'll explain in a second so i'm gonna do a line without pixel perfect and i'm gonna do a line with pixel perfect right underneath it and you can see the difference right this one kind of joins in like that shape and this one doesn't do that it just you just draw and it automatically doesn't make those little corners of overlapping pixels it just continues which is very useful because it looks cleaner when you're trying to do like perfect lines and you don't have to go later in and clean it up which is what i was doing with procreate so that's incredible i absolutely love that but there's more to the basic brush than meets the eye we can also choose the shape we can make it square i don't really use the square one but i guess if you're making something bigger and you really want to make like big squares like that or like something like that you can uh personally prefer the circle one just a round one because it's just more useful most of the time but you can do whatever you want and then we have matrix dither and this this is where it's at this is something that's definitely made for pixel art and i think i just think it's amazing okay let's have a look at it so i'm gonna make a, a blow blow little blobby blobby thing um quite big like that Zoop. And I'm going to make next to it one of a different color. There we go. We got our two colors. And for blending in pixel art, you need to do some dither, which normally if you want to do that in Procreate, you're going to have to do it pixel by pixel. You have to place your little pixels like that and it's going to take forever. Here we have the matrix dither and it has different gr like gradient for it. So if you want to create like a smooth gradient, you can start, uh, for example, with the number one which will be the darkest one and you can make it's a bit big at the moment you can make a line then you can maybe skip one to go to the three and make the other one and then go to the five and then go to the seven and then go to the nine for example i'm skipping a few just to kind of show you the effect it has but as you can see kind of like from far away you can see like the effect like the gradient effect it has it almost looks like it's orange in the middle even though we only use this like mustard yellow and the red but that's what it's used very used for usually not every style of pixel art uses it some people just like to do it by clusters of pixels some people like to do dither it really depends i think for more nature-based art it can look very very good if you do your gradients or your shadows like that so it doesn't look like a harsh line so yeah incredibly useful amazing made for pixel art i absolutely love it so let's have a look what's oh my voice went <laughs> let's have a look at what's happening right next to the brush here we have some adjustments so one of them that is also incredibly useful for pixel art is replace color so you can select whatever color you want from it there you can like drop tool use that right so for example you can do that and then you can choose a new color it can be from your palette it can be from anything you can slide it whatever you want and it's literally doing what's in the name it's going to replace that color completely right like how amazing is that you can just change it to whatever you want like and it makes your life so much easier it's so hard to do with procreate with this is like amazing like so 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 good oops we changed it to the same color bad idea bad idea <laughs> and you can update uh, your palette with the new colors that you have in the moment you can choose if it's just on all the painting or just that current layer or that current cell is so 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 much fun and i think it it's just a fantastic little tool there also you in here we can change the canvas size the grid add some symmetry which is very useful as well and onion skin you can choose to have it or not have it for your animation and to edit it like how the opacity etc etc same with the symmetry there's like different symmetries um, and you can move around the symmetry as well which is very very useful i'll show you right now okay so we have this for symmetry right so if i want to just draw like a circle right is going to do things if i want to draw a face it's going to do automatically like little symmetry which is amazing but you can also move the line of symmetry 
if I manage to do it, there we go. So now the line of symmetry is here. All right, if I move it here, you can do it there, right? Or you can put it again back in the middle and then it's back in the middle again. I think that's like super, super great tool. I find it very useful for a lot of things. So yeah, absolutely love the symmetry tool here. Then uh, we have, you know, our classic eraser that you can also choose to be pixel perfect, the size and everything. There's no, not much about it. It's just, you know, eraser. We have our bucket tool, which is very useful because you can either fill or erase with your bucket tool, which is great. So I can fill the whole screen or I can literally erase with that whole area. And then we have next to it, I don't know how to pronounce that word, so I'm just going to call it the Conti tool because I don't know how Conti, Conti, I'm not going to even, no, I'm not going to try. The Conti tool. So what the Conti tool does is that it, it will do all of it for that color. It won't just be what it's touching like right now if i go to the red with the conti tool activated oops i have it on a race in fill sorry this is deactivated it will do like that if i have it activated it'll only do one part of it but without it activated it'll do this whole so conti conti con conti tool just means that when it's touching right then that it selects that so it's absolutely great then we have a tool i use a lot as well which is the shapes tool we have your classic circle we can choose to have just the line of the circle we can have a full circle or ellipse in this case or we can have a perfect circle if we lock the aspect ratio all there up there in the right so absolutely great same thing goes for the rectangle uh we can have you know just the line we can have filled or we can look the expert ratio and get a perfect little square and now this one is super super useful is the line the line will just do you know straight lines you can choose wherever you want it but if you lock the aspect ratio for example if when you're doing isometric is extremely useful because look at that it's isometric lines no effort whatsoever amazing it, it, it just locks it to this position isometric diagonal isometric and then it's straight again so literally just locks it to those positions if you unlock it you just get lines however you want like it, it won't be super smooth but like it'll be a straight line which is also useful in other cases when you're not doing something that's like that precise so absolutely amazing i love those tools and then we have the move tool which you can use to rotate things around do, 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 do. but it only rotates in 90 degrees uh, which is something that I do miss from uh, Procreate, but I mean for pixel art, of course, it will deform it if it's not 90 degrees exactly But sometimes with, for my sketch, I don't mind if it gets a bit deformed just because I want to see maybe a slightly different angle of the sh General shape like I don't mind if the pixels aren't perfect, but I do understand why they didn't do it You can also flip it like that vertically and there and um, horizontally and you can also align it at any part of the canvas that you want that will be in the middle so way to the left and to the top in that corner automatically if i want it to the center i just need to press those or down and to the side or now i want it up but to that side and or to that side center up uh center down like you can do whatever you want it's quite useful for that and in this tool is where you can also make things bigger or smaller like that you can also squish it it's just it's just a transform tool and movement tool basically now for the select tool it has three modes your classic free hand your classic rectangular and then by color which is literally just bloop 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 bloop, bloop. and like we did before it also has uh, the conti tool which could be just that area like i only selected that those black lines or it can be the full color so if i deselect it it'll pick everything on that color so that's another way you can change colors quickly or just to paint in that area like of those colors for example if i just added to add a little bit of detail just to that area i could do that and then in the lower left corner we can deselect that's how you deselect basically um so yeah you can do that and you can also transform your selection so if i've already selected this area but i want to change it a little bit i can transform that selection to then um yeah just just select a bit different so it's great is it's very very cool tool uh, you can also down as you can see cut or copy any part of your drawing and you can invert the selection as well it's like okay i want to select anything outside of that selection so you can switch it around just like in procreate is great then this is my least favorite part of this app which is the color picker i hate this wheel 
I think this wheel is not very intuitive. You don't get to see properly how the colors are distributed like in a wheel or even in in um, in a you know triangle sometimes. I really don't like this. I prefer the Procreate ones because they even give you sometimes the complementary colors or like analogous colors and stuff like that is quite good. I mean, and then you have your classics like sliders, hex code, and you can see here your, your palette. So, you know, it's not the worst. Like, I'm not saying it's not like, you can use it right like it's fine you can still see the colors but i i don't know it feels a bit finicky having to scroll until you find the color that you want and then you know then you can move here around i know I, i'm a very visual person so that bothers me a little bit but it's not like you know terrible it's fine and then your selecting tool which is you know just to get colors your your eye drop sorry there you go just to select colors very basic nothing nothing else to it and then undo undo buttons very very simple uh now we're gonna have a closer look at how to export it so it has a few great things in terms of export exporting your um your drawing or your animation so it's right on the upper uh right corner we're gonna click the little box with the arrow and there you go you can choose the format images animated images movie sprite sheet that i think is great because what it does is that it will export like every single uh frame you know as your little sprite sheet you can even choose the number of columns i think that's absolutely amazing and also when you export it as an image or animated image if you want a gif or a movie or whatever you can choose down here the magnification so obviously this is 64 by 64 it is very small if i want to post it in social media like it says there increasing magnific magnification is sharing to social media it's not going to look very good it's going to look blurry you want usually at the very least a thousand pixels so it tells you and if you start making it bigger when it reaches around a thousand pixels that disappears and you know it's a good size for social media and you can choose to export all the frames such as the current frame and you have png tiff and jpeg 2000 which you know it's 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 a fine selection for pixel art so my final verdict is that this app needs needs it just needs a little bit of extra work to add a couple more features and i think it will be absolutely perfect and if what you do is pixel art i would recommend this over uh procreate if you do pixel art on the side but your main game is definitely other things i would say keep procreate you don't need this you can still do pixel art very successfully on procreate it's just that this one is made for pixel art so if that's your game go get it go buy it it's uh i think it's around 25 pounds when i got it around there so it's a little bit pricier but it's not like crazy expensive and it's not a subscription once you buy it you have it so that's also great about it and i think they are always releasing updates from time to time and the developers are very responsive on twitter i i told them about the the modes of the layers and they said they will add it to their list of things to potentially add to the app so yeah uh i would give it a four and a half pixels out of potential five pixels <laughs> this is a rating system i just made up so i hope you enjoyed the video i hope it was helpful to you and let me know if you get the app or if you have made any other Picks a lot with my advice. I love to see it. Tag me on Twitter or on Instagram, wherever. Also, make sure to sh check the links in the description. I've started a Patreon if you want to support me on there. It will be very, very appreciated. You get some exclusive perks like the Patreon community and stuff like that. So, yeah, absolutely. Please go check it. It'll mean the world to me. And subscribe and give me a like if you like the video. And I'll see you very soon. Mm, bye.